Welcome once again to Noir Alley, where a strict no discrimination policy is always in effect. I'm your host, Eddie Muller, and around here, we treat A films and B films with the same respect. Movies born on the Tony sound stages at Metro Goldwyn Mayer or Paramount had plenty of inherent advantage over scrappy product produced by the studio's B units or in poverty row companies, where budgets were meager and shooting schedules insanely short. But in the words of director Joseph H. Lewis, who directed plenty of nifty B features, the only difference between an A and a B is money. In fact, it could be argued that B films are where great directors best exhibited innovation and resourcefulness. A good example would be today's feature, The Clay Pigeon from 1949, a 63-minute thriller from the B unit at RKO Radio Pictures. Now, I mentioned the film's length because running time is essential to understanding what a B film truly is. Over the years, the term has taken on a pejorative connotation, as though B films inherently lacked the quality and sophistication of their more privileged uptown neighbors. In truth, Bs were technically defined as the second features on double bills. They all had shorter run times than the main feature, and due to much lower budgets, they featured stars of lesser stature. But while they may have been constrained as far as time, money, and prestige, B-films were only as limited as the imaginations and ingenuity of their makers. Back in the day, B-movies were proving grounds for directors. Some stayed in the trenches their whole careers, reliable but uninspired. Others blasted through their apprenticeship like a bat out of hell. Such was the case with the director of today's film, Richard Fleischer. Although he was from a show business family, his father Max was a renowned animator, second only to Walt Disney, as a kid, Fleischer showed no urge to be in the movie business. He leaned toward a career in medicine. But at Yale, he formed a drama club, and the itch to tell stories apparently got under his skin. Not long after moving to Los Angeles in the early 40s, he got a job at RKO making shorts and newsreels, and by 1946, he was working in the studio's B unit. Now, after a brief loan out to Columbia, where he directed a comedy for producer Stanley Kramer, Fleischer returned to RKO, making his bones with a string of tough and terse crime pictures, Bodyguard, Follow Me Quietly, Armored Car Robbery, and The Clay Pigeon. This was a script that Fleischer brought to the studio, not one that he was assigned. He had worked with writer Carl Foreman on the comedy so this is New York, made for Stanley Kramer at Columbia and released in 1948. Foreman and Kramer were production partners, but the writer was trying to beef up both his credits and his bank account. Now, he and Fleischer would carpool to the studio every day during the filming of The Clay Pigeon, and on those daily drives, Fleischer claimed that he and Foreman conceived a story that would, three years later, become a landmark in movie history, High Noon. Well, nobody is going to mistake this film for High Noon. With this one, Foreman caught the amnesia bug that was going around. Recent crime pictures like High Wall, Somewhere in the Night, and The Crooked Way all featured World War II vets with vacant memories. He based the film on a news report about a serviceman who recognized his POW camp guard on the streets of Los Angeles. Now, the script takes a few dramatic leaps in logic, often required in movies with such compressed narratives, but it also manages to make a few unexpected points about the Japanese-American experience during World War II. It's a genre yarn with a couple of spins that were progressive for the time. But, bottom line, this script was designed by Foreman to be a steady stream of scenes that would let his pal flash his credentials for inclusion on the A-list of Hollywood directors. Like others who rose from the trenches at RKO, Jacques Tenour, Robert Wise, and Anthony Mann, Fleischer was an instinctive, dynamic movie maker who could turn anything into satisfying entertainment. You'll see what I mean. From the first scene to the exciting climax, which is a warm-up for the wonders Fleischer would soon work on his breakthrough picture, The Narrow Margin. 
which I hope you caught a few weeks back on Noir Alley. Now, B-movies were crucial to RKO at this time. The business had been sold to Howard Hughes, and there was a lot of uncertainty and turmoil about his plans for the studio. While Hughes interfered incessantly with the studio's top-line projects, the B unit, under the stewardship of Sid Rogel, remained immune from the boss's caprices. Rogel got projects done on time and on budget, even if it meant ripping pages from the script of a film that had fallen behind schedule. Starring Bill Williams and Barbara Hale, and featuring some nice work, both in the studio and on location, by DP Robert DeGrasse, here is our Memorial Day Weekend Noir, The Clay Pigeon. 